If you've ever seen the film Groundhog Day, my dream was kind of similar to that. In the dream, I had just arrived in a small town, and I don't really remember the reason why I was there. I know that I was like a stranger in the town, like I didn't know anybody there and nobody knew who I was, but I don't know if there was like a specific reason for me being there. But anyway, at some point, I realized that I had a power, like a superpower. I could create save states, like I was using an emulator. And I guess if you've never used an emulator before, I had the power to like pick a point in time in the past and then travel to that point only in the past. So I could be like eating breakfast and set a point right there. And then later in the day, I could travel back to breakfast. Not like it, it, it had to be at a point where I had consciously decided to like set, set the save state, so to speak like save the world in that state and then return to the world when it was in that state. Like this was my power in this dream. So at first, when I when I discover this, I start having fun with it. Like I go up to somebody who's like a stranger and I ask them their mother, you know, I, I talk with, I, I strike up a conversation with them. And then once we're familiar with each other, I ask them their mother's name and they tell me their mother's name. And then I reload a save point and I travel back to before I met them and then I go up to them and I tell them their mother's name. And they're like, whoa, what, what the hell? <laughs> How do you know my mom's name? What, the, what is this? I just had fun screwing with people and like making people think I had telepathy or something. Or could like, hey, think of a number between one and ten. What's the number? <laughs> and then like travel back in time and then tell them what the number was. Like, whoa, are you psychic? And uh, so whenever I was like screwing with people, I would always revert time back to normal so that like I wouldn't gain a reputation in the town. I wanted to have like a pure reputation as just this nobody. So I could, you know, because once you have a reputation, I can't revert time back to the point before then. So I was, I kept, I, I made sure to keep things clean and pure. So anyway, after a while of messing around with my save state power, I got bored because like nothing would stimulate me anymore because I had already like tried everything. And I realized that if I want to, like, get some sort of excitement out of this power, I need to stop, like, screwing with people in small ways, and I need to do something extreme. And so, like, there's, there's no consequences for doing bad things because I could travel back in time anytime I wanted. So I decided that I'm going to use this power to be naughty. And when I say naughty, I mean I killed someone. I went to a hospital, and I saw a nurse with pink hair. She, if, if you were here a few nights ago, the nurse looked exactly like Super Sonico. Like, just identical to Sonico. I almost want to call her Sonico, but not really. She wasn't really Sonico. But anyway, so for whatever reason, I decided I was going to kill this lady. She was really nice and sweet, so I don't know why I decided to kill her instead of kill someone who was, like, cruel and evil. I just decided, hey, I'm going to kill this lady because it's, it's superpowers. Might as well use them. There wasn't any logic to it. It was just a dream. So anyway, she goes to the rooftop of the hospital, and she's all alone. And I follow her to the roof rooftop, and I kill her. Like, I guess I stabbed her with a knife or something. This is the vague part. I don't remember exactly how she died, but I killed her on the rooftop, like she was Midori. Then I reload an earlier save state, and I travel back in time to before I, I, I killed her. And uh, I leave the hospital, and I just continue mucking around in the town not really doing anything serious. Now, like, time passes, and about a week later, I'm using the internet, and I use Google Maps to look at the town, like get a bird's eye view of the town, and I zoom in on the hospital. And on the hospital rooftop, I see the nurse. I see the corpse of the woman that I killed. But this is wrong, because I traveled back in time to before she was dead. So she shouldn't be dead. She's alive in this timeline. So her corpse shouldn't be up there. But I'm looking at it on Google Maps. And I'm thinking, no way. Is, is, what, what the hell is going on here? I, so I go to the hospital and I go to the rooftop. And, sh and sure enough, her body is there on the roof. Like she, It's been there for a week, like a decomposed corpse. It's been rotting for a week. And so I go back to the hospital and, and the nurse is there alive. 
Just no one has gone up to the rooftop and no one has found the corpse, but it's up there. And now the nurse, like, she's different. She looks different and she acts different. Like, her hair isn't pink anymore. Her hair is brown now. It's like she dyed her hair, but then she decided to dye it back to its natural color. And where she used to be, like, cheerful and perky, now she's, like, depressed and in a bad mood. It's like killing her in another timeline had an effect on her and changed her, and now she's, like, dead and empty inside. Because, you know, she, she died technically. It's, like, weird, and I'm freaking out because I haven't witnessed, like, consequences carrying over between timelines before. And, I t and so I, I decide I want to see how she's going to react to discovering her own corpse. So I go up to her and I tell her, help, I, I, I need help from someone. There's something terrible on the rooftop. You have to come see it. And I lead her up to the rooftop. And, and there, she finds her own weak old corpse. You know, she, at first she sees, she, it's, like a, it's like, oh my God, someone collapsed on the rooftop. And she runs over, are you okay? And she realizes that they're dead. And then she realizes that it's her. And then she's freaking out because she's looking at her own dead body and she's been dead for a while. And this is freaky to her. And she's like wondering if this is a prank or if this is real, but that's a real decomposing body. And, I mean, I guess being a nurse, she might have seen some corpses. But anyway, she doesn't know what to do at this point. Because she, she's like, she's, she doesn't know if she should report this to the police. Because she doesn't know how to explain that there's two of her and that one of her is dead and the other one's alive. And she's really freaking out because this is totally shattering her, like, perception of reality to see herself dead. And she's pacing back and forth, leaving the rooftop and then coming back to the rooftop like going in and out of the entrance to the rooftop. And she's trying to figure out what to do. And I'm following her, and I'm going back and forth with her, on the rooftop, off the rooftop, entering, exiting. I'm trying to talk with her. I'm trying to calm her down. I don't know what to do either, because I've never had consequences for my time-traveling stuff happen before. And one of these times, when we leave the rooftop and then we come back, there's someone else up there on the rooftop. It's a kid who looks like he's about 13 years old. He was blonde, and he looked like he was wearing, like, a butler outfit. And he had this annoyed look on his face, like, all the time, like, pretty much from this moment till the end of the end of the dream, annoyed look on his face. And I was, I, this was really a shock to me because there's no other way to get to the rooftop. There was only one entrance, and I was going in and out of that entrance every 30 seconds, pacing with the nurse. So I'm like, why is there a person on the roof right now? He had, here's the thing, here's the thing. He had a broom and a dustpan. And he was like doing a sweeping motion at the corpse. Like he was trying to sweep up the corpse, right? But of course, like a, a human body can't be swept up by a broom, right? Wrong. As he was sweeping the corpse with the broom, pieces of the body were coming off and being brushed into the dustpan where they would disappear. It's like this guy had a magical corpse-disposing broom. And so I, I, immediately I start trying to ask this guy questions like, who are you? How did you get up there? And then more importantly, what are you doing to that corpse? But no matter what I said to him, he refused to speak. He kept looking at me with like disgust on his face, like he thought I was an awful, terrible person but he wouldn't speak to me. And I couldn't figure out if he was like choosing to just not answer my questions or if he was like mute or something. And eventually, like I say to him, if I bring you a pen and a piece of paper, will you write down the answers to my questions? I'm trying to think if he can't speak vocally, maybe he can write things down. And so after I say this to him, he stops what he's doing and he like ponders to himself. And then he gets this big, happy smile on his face. And he nods his head up and down like he's going, yeah, 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 bring me paper. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's kind of creepy because he was like frowning and upset and grumpy up until that point. And now he was all like, oh, yeah, yeah, bring the paper. Yeah, yeah, do it, do it, yeah. So this is kind of weird. So the nurse and I leave the, ro the rooftop. And I, I get some paper from somewhere in the hospital. And... The nurse is, like, still panicking and freaking out, and I tell her, just wait here, just to remove her from the equation, and then I go back to the rooftop alone. 
And before I return to the kid on the rooftop, I think to myself, it, would, it might be kind of fun to like tell him I'm the one who killed that woman. I killed her because I was bored. How does that make you feel? Like I, it might be fun to screw with him or mess with him and then like reverse time and go back to before when I spoke to him. And so I make a save state basically. And then I, I start walking, you know, I, I go to the entrance of the rooftop and I open the door to the rooftop. And the very moment I open the door, the kid is standing right there in front of the door with a huge grin on his face and he's holding a knife and he lunges to me and he stabs me in the stomach and it hurts like hell and I'm panicking and freaking out and I immediately just reload my last save state and travel back in time to the moment before I opened the rooftop door. So I'm standing there in front of the door knowing there's someone on the other side of the door with a knife who will kill me as soon as I open the door. And I'm like, holy shit, why did he, why is he standing there with a knife and why did he try to kill me? And I, and it, it like, I realize this kid must know. He's this mysterious kid who just mysteriously appeared on the rooftop and has got this mysterious magic broom and can just mysteriously make corpses disappear. This guy has got to be some kind of cosmic entity who's like, it's like his job is to clean up time paradoxes. Like, you know, erasing uh, the corpse of someone who's not supposed to be dead, for example. And that's why he's here. When that lady discovered her own corpse, it was like messing with the fabric of time and space. So he had to show up to clean up and get rid of the corpse. And the reason for that disgust on his face must be because he knows I'm the one who did it. He knows I have time traveling powers He's like, and he knows I'm a murderer. <laughs> and so I'm thinking, how the hell am I going to do with this? How, how do I deal with this? I don't know what this kid's capable of. I know he's capable of a magic dustpan and broom, and he has a knife. What other powers does he... He can teleport to a rooftop, event, apparently. But what else can this kid do? How afraid do I need to be? How, exactly how much danger am I in? Am I going to die or something because I've been screwing with time too much? Is this my cosmic punishment? I don't know. And I decide that, like, I've got I've to somehow, I, I, can't overpower, I can't try to overpower him because I might get killed. So I have to try and, like, use my wits or something to manipulate him. So I've got a save state, so I know I'm, I'm, I'm like, safe. So I open the door and I try speaking to him, like, hey, wait, don't attack. I have something to say. But he doesn't listen, and he just takes out the knife and lunges forward. So I turn and run away. And I, I, like, I'm running, and I go around a corner, and I'm running down a hallway, and then I turn around, and I see the kid. He's coming out from around the corner. He's coming for me. And I'm worried, and I'm freaked out, and I panic, and I make a safe state right then and there. And that was a really fucking stupid mistake. Because now I, like, the last, the, I can only travel back in time to that exact moment where there's a kid running at me with a knife. So I just made the worst, most stupid possible mistake I can possibly make. I'm stuck in a timeline where this kid is running at me with a knife. And there's like no way to escape this situation. So I decide like I've got I've to try to say something to him that's going to make him stop. So I wait until he's like within earshot. And then I say, I say to him, wait, you've already killed me over 100 times. I'm getting tired of it. And this surprises him like he didn't expect to hear that. And he stops running. And I realize, like, oh, my, oh, my God. It worked. He fell for it. I just told him a complete lie, but it worked. So I decided to keep talking. I say, no matter how many times you try to kill me, I just keep traveling back through time and coming back. This is like the 100th time we've had this conversation. Trying to kill me is pointless. It's not getting us anywhere. So please stop. I've tried a hundred different ways to make you speak to me, and no matter what, you won't answer my questions. I'm tired of dying. Just, just talk to me. And of course, I'm exaggerating. I've only traveled back in time once. But I'm thinking, you know, if he knows about time travel, then he's going to fall for what I'm saying. It's going to sound like a plausible thing to say to him. So after I say this, he like stops and, he, and he's thinking to himself. and He's like pondering. He's, consider he's mulling it over. And then he puts his knife away. And then he starts to speak for the first time. But he has this deep voice, like deeper than a child should have. And he says something like, Fine. 
If that's the way things are, then I'll explain everything. You see. And then, my alarm clock went off and I woke up. So I never got to find out what happened next. <laughs> it's, that's, that's all there is to the story. There's no more. Because the dream ended. Right when it was getting good. I was about to find out everything. Where did these powers come from? You know, why didn't that lady's corpse disappear? Who's this kid and what's he going to do to me? I'll never find, I'll never know the answers. I mean, maybe I'll get really, really lucky. And like when I go to sleep tonight, like the dream will resume where it picked off. Where it, it resume where it stopped or something. But I've, that's only happened to me like one or two times in my whole life where I go, I go to sleep and I have a dream that's basically like the continuation of a previous dream. It's only happened like once or twice in my life. It's not something you can just intentionally trigger. It, it's, your dreams are just ran, your brain randomly farting around so you don't know what you're going to get. So I, I, I would say the chances are next to nothing that I'm actually going to get to you know, continue the dream. But, uh, man, I really do hope that, uh, <laughs> I really hope that the dream continues because it was getting good. And, uh, I hope you liked, I hope you like listening to it.